Yeah, the emergence of xenophobic um, emotions in, in, in South Africa is obviously is disturbing for any human being. Um, for me and for millions of others in South Africa who regard South Africa as a nation of, uh, of reconciliation, peace, diversity, and at the same time unity, um, it is uh, in part surprising, but in another respect it is not surprising, because South Africa is a unified nation in its complex diversity, which is not just about African diversity, it's also European diversity, it's also a whole lot of other uh, forms of diversity. Um, so uh, it is it is natural for people to be um, to be at times suspicious of each other. But I think xenophobia that we see now has little to do with those type of ingrained uh, suspicions. It it comes really to a, a, a number of socioeconomic factors, in part because South Africa has one of the top rates of unemployment, especially amongst the youth that ranges ranges between 30 to sometimes 50 plus percent um, that creates frustration that creates anger and uh, quite frankly we we have not dealt with that anger in in, in south africa uh, not not because of its historic roots but for today mm-hmm. we are not giving our youth um, who are the fountains of energy a hope a, a light at the end of the tunnel as to uh, what's going to happen to their life. So many, many millions of them live in this fairly uh, day-to-day, hand-to-mouth, uh, and relatively hopeless. Uh, and that creates uh, a new sense of frustration uh, and carelessness. Uh, any human being that, who is hungry and who is hopeless has no boundaries. Um, so that's one of the key contributors to this wave of xenophobia. At the same time, of course, we have a new dispensation which has human rights uh, as its foundation, uh, wants to integrate to, to, to the rest of the continent. And despite all its shortcomings, South Africa still remains the most vibrant economy. So if you are sitting in the DRC or if you are sitting in Malawi or, or in uh, Somalia, uh, and the many other parts of, of, of the continent, South Africa still is a good place to be. So the borders are, are relatively free, um, the expectations are quite high, so a lot of people from many, many nations find themselves in South Africa. The only difference between our unemployed and our poor and the ones who come from other parts of the, uh, the continent is that um, they have had such a low base from where they come from, unstable conditions politically, lawlessness um, and brutality in, in some cases, uh, especially people who come from um, the central part of the continent um, or Somalia, that for them South Africa is, is peaceful mm-hmm. and they are prepared to work hard. They've got skills, they've got tenacity. Uh, and the environment is peaceful, so they put shoulder to wheels, they make something from nothing. And I can tell you from my personal experience, when you've broken all the bridges behind you, you only have one hope, and that is success. You have to succeed. There is nobody to help you, there is no alternate uh, sort of uh, hope other than rely on your own capabilities, push yourself, make a success of it. Because if you don't, then life is a misery. So I think many people who come from the other parts of Africa, they find South Africa is a very fertile, very uh, favorable, very peaceful and orderly environment to start businesses. Now whether those businesses are uh, uh, side of the street stand or a general dealer, uh, depends on where they come from, whether they have a hairdresser or whether they're making clothes, mending clothes, whatever the case might be. What they are not scared of is working hard and trying different things because there is nothing else other than trying. 
and they make it. That's just the nature of a human being. You try, as they say, knock at many doors, one of them will open. As long as you keep at it. Now, our local uh, population uh, is in a different space. Um, it's got a different experience. It has that built-in anger uh, and watches foreigners coming from nowhere and then the next thing they're running a shop six months later two years later they seem to be getting better and better and that also creates an element of mix of jealousy a mix of deprivation then the concept takes note that no the foreigners are taking our jobs which is completely nearly unjustified or misplaced uh, then on top of it you get some leaders, uh, uh, traditional leaders, political leaders, business leaders, who also fan this flame of emotions. And then when the opportunity comes up, uh, it converts into xenophobia. But it is not something that I think the majority of South Africans relate to. Uh, and it's also important to, to recognize that in every community, there are xenophobic elements. You go to Germany today, there are people who, if you give them half a chance, they want to get rid of all the Turks and the Algerians and the European non-Germans. You go to England, the same thing. You go to France, the same thing. You go to America, the same thing. I lived in Canada and America both, and I know, uh, again, not everybody, not the majority, but there is a sliver of population, <coughs> sorry, who, who have those feelings and that's in a way normal in the sense that every society has got those outliers so i have no doubt that a fraction of south africans much like a fraction of germans much like a fraction of russians they are xenophobic but that does not make the society xenophobic that does not mean that the majority of south africans black and white colored or indian they gravitate and converge towards their humanity and uh, especially so in South Africa that I know from my 35 years of experience that the South African nation is deeply religious and spiritual they may have their own religious there are Hindus and there are Muslims and there are Jews and Christians uh, whatever they are uh, within that there as a human beings they are they are very human and, and, and humane that's the majority but the minority always exists. And unless really the minority comes up with this uh, fairly outrageous conduct, the majority can't show itself. The silent majority keeps thinking that everybody is like them. And it's been very uh, disturbing that we've seen in 2008 a wave of xenophobic attacks, mostly in Johannesburg area. Then we saw it in the Cape area, now we see it in Natal, in Durban area, and in Johannesburg. Um, these occasional outbursts of xenophobic emotions um, create a platform for the society to sit back and say, wow, is that what we are? Is that what we want to be known at? And if not, what need to be done to avoid and avert um, such uh, disruptions? And um, so, yes, it's a terrible thing that has happened. It's a disturbing thing. And yet, it's got a positive side to it. It has awakened the government to realize that there are issues around xenophobia that they haven't addressed, as the president said. It has brought businesses. Now, suddenly, we see in the media businesses uh, putting their color to the mask, put, taking ad in the newspaper, saying, uh, we don't like it. It has taken the sporting colors to come out be it soccer, be it cricket, be it uh, rugby, to rethink and take a position. Artists, the same thing. Um, media, the same thing. So I think it has, as bad as it has been, and tragically seven people have lost their lives, and yet it has created an opportunity for the rest of the society and different groupings to uh, reflect and to say, okay, what can I do? Because xenophobia is not is not confined to any particular person or group. Uh, it's a challenge that we all 
Imagine what could happen if we all join the cause And we can put it off But what will be the cost to the people who are reaching And no one answers their calls Be somebody's lifeline when they need it most Cause the hand that serves is open to receive the most And spread the light of unity cause I can feel the close It's really up to you and me to give the peace and hope